Hey everyone, it's Julian from Digital Trends and we're taking a look at some of the new features in iOS 11. So some of the first visual cues that you'll notice in iOS 11 is a revamped control center. As you can see, there's no need to really swipe across uh, like before and here we have this complete layout in one screen so you can access everything. So for example, jump into the camera right there Go back and you can see a flashlight, this is the alarm clock, calculator, uh, screen mirroring and the usual sorts and you can actually act on some of these by pressing and holding using force touch. So that's music app right there and here you can just slide this right here to for brightness and the same with audio right here. Another big change is the notification system. So as you swipe down this looks familiar right this is basically the lock screen and the way to sort of Right here, you'll see your recent notifications, but to swipe up, you can see everything else that's been going on on your phone. And again, pressing, moving this up at the end would bring you back to your home screen, or you could just press the home button and you get back right there. But the only, the things are different. So when you actually pull down and want to access your notifications, before you used to be able to be, uh, swipe on them or act on them in certain ways, now you have to press them and you can either uh, reply, like, or, or whatever, it depends on what the notification is, but here I can dismiss it just by doing that. Of course, I can still clear all by pressing and holding the X mark right here. Oh, there we go. Cleared it. And the same thing happens that you would happen on your lock screen here is that, uh, as you saw earlier, if I wanted to go left or right on anything, it would take you to the widget Today widget page or your camera. So it's basically uh, the notification drop down has been replaced with your lock screen. It's kind of weird, uh, might take some getting used to, but uh, just think of it as your lock screen when you pull it down. So iMessage also has a few improvements. It's now much more easier to find and use your uh, iMessage apps. So you can see here, uh, you can just go right in in iMessage and look at some of these apps that you can download. And also, as you can see at the bottom here, when you uh, actually go to your messages, uh, the, the, whatever you have uh, that's capable of working will actually be available right here for you to be able to quickly use. And you can just click on them and it'll basically give you the option to, uh, for example, for Google Maps, it gives you my location, I can send it, and there you go. And this also extends to uh, Apple Pay. You should be able to uh, pay with uh, Apple Pay to your friends, and, and it's it's a sort of smart because so if someone says uh, you owe me twenty dollars, Apple Pay will show up right here, and basically uh, it'll let you just pay that person with one touch, and you can authenticate it with your fingerprint or a passcode. Uh, we don't have it set up right now, so we can't show it, but it should work. The App Store has also been redesigned, so as you can see here, this is a completely different uh, version of the App Store. It's uh, actually quite similar to the Apple Music app, the Apple News app. It has that sort of uh, newspaper sort of aesthetic. Uh, and, and the point here is, is not so much uh, just a giant clutter of apps that you can browse through. It's more uh, like a magazine now. Um, there's, as you can see right here, five tips to get more out of uh, BSEO or Visco. It's an editing app for photos. Uh, basically, Apple is trying to get you to visit each uh, day and that's why it says today at the top so uh, every day there'll be a new app of the day uh, there'll be a game of the day and as you can see different categories uh, for per day uh, and you can go down to see previous days and it's basically getting you to visit the app store per day uh, just to download more apps and also introduce you to new things through these types of tips and you can see these live videos that are happening Siri can also now do translations. Hey Siri, translate goodbye in French. In French, goodbye is au revoir. So Google Assistant and there are Google Translate, for example, have been able to do this kind of translation for a long time. Uh, Siri is sort of catching up here, but it's nice to be able to use this uh, translation. It only works for a certain number of languages, like German, uh, English, French, uh, but uh, Apple will be expanding that as time goes on. You can also see this uh, little files app will be installed on iOS 11. 
you click on it, it's basically a file manager app that uh, iOS really needed. As you can see, you can access your data from your iCloud Drive. Now, the good thing is that if you also uh, use Google Drive, Dropbox, and other uh, drive storage, uh, cloud storage services, you'll be able to access all of that here. Uh, you just have to log in and access your files, and you know instead of going to each separate app, you can all find them here, download them, and you know transfer them, send them. Basically, a great file manager that makes using files on the iPhone a lot better. There's a lot more features on iOS 11, but right now we're only using the developer beta. So you can't actually download that unless you're a developer or have a developer account. Uh, what you can do is wait for the public beta, which comes out later this month, and all you have to do is uh, enroll your device in the beta, and your phone will automatically get the iOS 11 beta, and the official version and final version will be rolling out later this year, along with the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 7S, whatever the next iPhone's called.